what makes something have a dynamic story? What makes something have depth? Recently, I've actually dove into this, thinking about can I make an engaging story, a movie that could hook people in off of a relatively simple concept. So I dove into this by making my new project, a film about my dog, Tyson. I want to be more like a dog. Not just any dog. I want to be more like Tyson. This is a movie about a dog, me and this dog. And while I thought, oh, this is like a very basic concept, even the elevator pitch, a movie about my dog, sounds pretty easy. When I premiered the movie, when I actually recently just finished it and showed it to everybody, I got, like, people were crying, it was a deep connection, and I was able to create a formula, one that I think will work for pretty much any piece of content out there to be able to engage people. I can't promise that it'll make people cry, but there are strategies to this, to make your content suck less. First thing is you need an emotional attachment, something that people can connect to. This film that I've been working on, I've been able to create a lot of bonds through that because I actually have my own personal connection to Tyson and there's a lot of interesting stories behind that. But if it's a documentary or a brand video or a product video that you're trying to do, what you have to do is isolate what the thing is that you're trying to sell on its own and then pull away and extrapolate, well, what can be a connection to that thing? The first thing that makes content just content is transitions. Not necessarily hating on transitions specifically, but they are the shortcut to giving an emotional response. And I want you to think about emotional response shortcuts. Shortcuts never do any justice when it comes to actually providing any sort of value to people unless you're trying to get to something faster. But faster doesn't necessarily always mean better. So transitions and video transitions are sort of the I don't know, metaphor for that. If you're actually wanting something to create a connection, you'd have to go beyond flash, flare, color grade transitions, and probably 90% of the tutorials you've watched online. You have to dive into an emotional response. If I think back on some of my favorite films within the past few years, a movie like Free Solo, while rock climbing is something I cannot connect to whatsoever, I've rock climbed a few times and I, I enjoy it, that I don't have an emotional response to other than being scared as hell. But what they do bring in is the personality of Alex Honnold. They bring in the characteristics of his relationship that he's building with this girl at this time. They're adding emotional connections. So therefore, when he actually does climb, you feel that connection. They even shoot shots of like the filmmakers down on the bottom shooting it and how scary that is. That is creating emotional connection. Relating back to this documentary that I'm currently working on, I've been able to forge these emotional connections by diving into uh, interviews. And so what I ended up doing is my dog actually had all these stories around him um, that were just sort of orbiting him. But he is like this storytelling vessel. And no matter what you look at, if you're getting hired by a brand to do a video or a commercial about a paddleboard, Think about the stories that can revolve around that and the connection, the emotional response. And as soon as you're able to build out emotional response, therefore you have the sort of roadmap for actually a story. A story is built off of connection and emotional response. For the life of a dog, he's had a really good life, but if there was not the life of that dog, I don't think I'd still be here. Tyson's kind of the fuzzy glue that held me together. Another really good way to be able to build a connection to something uh, is to actually experience it if you can. Let's say you're hired by an events company to shoot an event. It's an endurance event somewhere out in Idaho. The first thing you should try and ask the brand to do is if you can actually participate in the beginning. <sighs> 
is insanely steep. Far too often I've seen videos by people who haven't actually experienced the thing that they're trying to sell, and therefore it just feels sort of distant. And an ad actually created by the company even shot on their cell phone might have more connection because they know the brand they're trying to sell. So as a storyteller, the best thing you can do for a brand or whoever you're being hired by or the story you're trying to create is to build and forge a connection. So therefore you have material to work with within the edit. Going back to like how simple transitions can be, the reason why they're the destruction of it is because a transition really doesn't explain anything. It doesn't explain any sort of emotional response maybe it can make something more engaging. And this isn't a video against transitions. It's just to show that plugins and safety add-ons don't necessarily give you the thing that you need. So let's say you've been able to figure out what that connection is. Well, how do you share that and tell a better story through it? I have about five things that I use all of the time. My first sort of tool is nostalgia. Is there a way that I can create a nostalgic hook? I actually have a full video about this, how to create feelings out of videos using nostalgia in the description below, so I won't dive too far into it. But one of the easiest routes to pull on for someone is sort of a nostalgic connection to something. Whether it's old videos, old music, typically if you watch a Hollywood film, they'll put a classic song in it to really bring out the emphasis of nostalgia. In good documentaries, they'll play old handy cam footage from family like Christmases because it makes that emotional connection right away. We all have those types of experiences. And even now, Hollywood is sort of finding their path into this by shooting st stuff on cell phones to make it feel more grounded in reality. The next tool that I use is a vessel. I also have a video about this, so I won't dive too far into it, but finding a sort of thing that guides you on that. So if let's say you're shooting a movie or a documentary about your dog, the dog would probably be the vessel. It would be the, the, the main center planet that all of the other planets orbit around, the other concepts and the other ideas. If you're doing a branded video, maybe you're shooting an ad about a water bottle. Well, what's the, the story about that water bottle that people orbit? Finding a message around some sort of um, a tool or a prop has been something that I've used countless times on a short film that I made about crossing Canada. I use flipping through like a journal as my vessel. I've used things like my shoes, dog, backpack, you name it. Some sort of tool that people can relate to and get their own hands on. I think that adds a good essence of relatability. Tell a good story. And maybe that's what it's felt like this entire video has been about. But I actually think above telling a good story is telling a good message. Sometimes it can be very overwhelming when we're like, oh, we gotta make a good story. Well, I don't know what the good story is. There's nothing entertaining happening. Breaking it down to something more digestible than, than just, as just a message can really help. So for example, maybe your message is how to live a more simple life, how to enjoy the easy things in life. If that's, let's say, your message, well then what are the things that can sort of help build that out? In my short film about my dog Tyson, while there's a lot of ideas thrown at the wall and there's a lot of concepts thrown out there, talking about my dog, talking about the journey of my dog, I had a one message, one key word and sentence that I played out over and over and over again Again while editing it, which allowed me to complete it. And that word was simple joy. I guess that's two words. <laughs> On these sort of same day, uh, same day endurance video edits, I'll play out a mantra as well with that. But that mantra can be built from experiencing. So they all sort of feed together to help tell the overall story. But sometimes story can be so daunting that we get analysis paralysis. We don't complete it because we don't know what the story is. It's gotta be this big thing. It's gotta be this Oscar winning concept. So simplify it with a, with a vessel and that vessel could actually also be your, your mantra or your so something that's really important for the whole engaging story process to making content go into a good story is the purpose, to understand what is the value of this. And that can go into your message, that can go into the vessel, that will go into all aspects of things, but you need to know what your purpose is. Now for a brand, it's probably to sell more products, which is actually an okay, purpose. You know, okay, my goal, my plan of attack is to sell more water bottles. I have to sell a hundred water bottles with this ad. So whatever my messaging, meaning, story, concept, things and planet I orbit with this concept needs to sell those items. It needs to do X, Y, Z. 
And so maybe it's to sell products, maybe it's to gain more exposure, maybe it's to feel satisfied as a human being, which is typically what my purpose is every time I go into making something. By the way, if you guys are wondering what, like what the hell has been playing behind Zach this whole time, it's my short film companionship that I made a few years ago. So you guys can take a look at it in the description below. But understanding what the purpose and the meaning and why you're actually doing something in the first place is very important. I'd highly recommend asking why when you go into something, because if you don't know what your why is, you can really lose path of what you're creating and therefore it'll end up just being basic, boring, bland content. And I can promise you, if you hate the concept of regret and you don't want to regret anything that you put out there, 100% ask why before you even press record on something. So once you know what your why is, you can justify your means, you can justify your interests, you can justify your pursuit, and therefore have that sort of fuel that'll get you to the finish line. Finally, uh, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Cuts. Cuts is an incredible clothing company that I've been able to be sponsored by now, and as well, I've just been able to wear their stuff. I can easily say uh, they have some of the most rad clothes that I've ever worn ever. I'm one of those types of people who wear the same shirt for like, <laughs> for like three or four days straight, and while it's, you're like, oh, Zach, that's disgusting. Some of us do that, okay? Some of us go into like the crazy editing binges and we're just like behind our computers and working. You know what it's like, it happens. And so I go through that as well. And sometimes, or if I'm traveling or whatever, I need a versatile set of clothing that I can shove in my bag, pull out, pop on, all that stuff. And Cuts has been that clothing brand for me. And I've absolutely loved wearing their stuff. It feels great, doesn't wrinkle, doesn't feel gross or scuzzy after the third day of wearing. I'd recommend you guys washing your clothes, but this has been my experience. Uh, so if you guys are interested in the shirt that I've worn throughout this entire video and wanna have your hand on some of the most comfortable men's clothes at least I've ever worn and I can speak to that, uh, then definitely take a look at uh, Kat's link in the description below is provided. I absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this. If you guys have any ideas or concepts that you want to pitch to me to making future videos, I'd absolutely love to hear your thoughts. Please write that in the comment sections below. I love the feedback that you've been, you guys say, you mean so much to me and uh, I absolutely love you. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys later.